take off your tinfoil hats for a second because sometimes an insane sounding conspiracy theory actually turns out to be true. From the government making up an enemy attack to justify war to mind control experiments, some stories are hard to believe until declassified documents or investigations prove they actually happen. Here are five of the wildest former conspiracy theories we found. Number 5. Operation MK Ultra. Perhaps one of the most shocking conspiracy theories that turned out to be true was a CIA program called MK Ultra, which had the stated goal of developing biological and chemical weapons capability during the Cold War, but it ballooned into a larger program that encompassed research which promote the intoxicating effect of alcohol, enhance the ability of individuals to withstand torture during interrogation and so-called brainwashing. The program also conducted experiments on individuals which will produce amnesia, shock and confusion over extended periods of time, and capable of producing physical disablement, such as paralysis of the legs, etc. During the program, the CIA established front companies to work with more than 80 institutions, such as hospitals, prisons, and universities. With these partnerships in place, the agency then ran experiments on subjects using drugs, hypnosis, and verbal and physical abuse. At least two American deaths can be attributed to this program, according to the Church Committee. Though the Church Committee uncovered much of this shocking program, many of the top secret files were ordered destroyed in 1973 by CIA Director Richard Helms. Number 4. Operation Mockingbird Started in the 1950s amid the backdrop of the Cold War, the Central Intelligence Agency approached leading American journalists in an attempt to influence public opinion and gather intelligence. The program, called Operation Mockingbird, went on for nearly three decades. Some of these journalists' relationships with the agency were tacit, some were explicit. There was cooperation, accommodation, and overlap. Journalists provided a full range of clandestine services from simple intelligence gathering to serving as go-betweens with spies in communist countries. Reporters shared their notebooks with the CIA. The Church Committee exposed much of the program with a full report from Congress stating, the CIA currently maintains a network of several hundred foreign individuals around the world who provide intelligence for the CIA and at times attempt to influence opinion through the use of covert propaganda. These individuals provide the CIA with direct access to a large number of newspapers and periodicals, scores of press services and news agencies, radio and television stations, commercial book publishers, and other foreign media outlets. Number 3. U.S. military leaders had a plan to kill innocent people and blame it all on Cuba. Sitting just 90 miles from the Florida coast and considered a serious threat during the Cold War, Communist Cuba, under its leader Fidel Castro, was a problem for the United States. The U.S. tried to oust Castro during the Bay of Pigs invasion of 1961, but the operation failed. So the generals went back to the drawing board and came up with an unbelievable plan called Operation Northwoods. What were the embarrassing plans? There were ideas for lobbing mortars into Guantanamo Naval Base in addition to blowing up some of the aircraft or ammunition there. Then there was another idea floated to blow up a ship in its harbor. But these were timid compared to other plans that came later in a top secret paper. Quote, we could develop a communist Cuba terror campaign in the Miami area, in other Florida cities, and even in Washington. We could sink a boatload of Cubans en route to Florida, exploding a few plastic bombs in carefully chosen spots, the arrest of Cuban agents, and the release of prepared documents substantiating Cuban involvement also would be helpful in projecting the idea of an irresponsible government. The paper went on to describe in detail other plans for possibly hijacking or shooting down a drone airliner made to look like it was carrying civilian passengers or faking a shootdown of a U.S. Air Force jet over international waters to blame Cuba. Number 2. The FBI infiltrated, surveilled, and tried to discredit American political groups it deemed subversive. When it wasn't investigating crimes, the Federal Bureau of Investigation under Director J. Edgar Hoover kept busy trying to suppress the spread of communism in the United States. 
under a secret program called COINTELPRO, the FBI harassed numerous political groups and turned many of its members completely paranoid. From the book, The United States of Paranoia by Jesse Walker, under COINTELPRO, FBI agents infiltrated political groups and spread rumors that loyal members were the real infiltrators. They tried to get targets fired from their jobs, and they tried to break up the targets' marriages. It wasn't only communist or left-leaning organizations. The FBI's list of targets included the civil rights movement, and public enemy number one was Dr. Martin Luther King. It would have been just a wacky conspiracy theory from a bunch of paranoid leftists that no one would have believed. But the conspiracy theorists, a group of eight anti-war activists, broke into an FBI field office in 1971 and found a trove of documents that exposed the program. Number one, the U.S. Navy fired on North Vietnamese torpedo boats that weren't even there. On the night of August 4, 1965, the USS Maddox engaged against hostile North Vietnamese torpedo boats following an unprovoked attack. The only problem? There were no torpedo boats or an attack. The Maddox fired at nothing, but the incident was used as a justification to further escalate the conflict in Vietnam. President Lyndon Johnson reported that at least two of the enemy boats were sunk, and American media outlets backed up that story in numerous articles. But conspiracy theorists thought it looked a lot like a false flag attack. They were right, according to the National Security Agency's own declassified documents. Others who were present, including James Stockdale, a Navy pilot who would later receive the Medal of Honor, disputed the official account. I had the best seat in the house to watch that event, and our destroyers were just shooting at phantom targets. There were no PT boats there. There was nothing there but Blackwater and American firepower. Even LBJ wasn't convinced. Quote, for all I know, our Navy was shooting at whales out there.